Good evening. Police today released the name of the hunter fatally shot on Stewart Island yesterday morning. Samuel Philip Long, aged 24, of Invercargill, was part of a five-person hunting group when he was shot by another member of the party and died at the scene. Police attended the incident on Stewart Island after being alerted by Maritime New Zealand about the activation of an emergency beacon. Police are continuing their investigations and will be speaking with a number of people. Police teams continue to scour the shoreline and other areas near Kirio Bay, searching for missing 11-year-old Mike Jao Breckenridge and his stepfather John Breckenridge. Police stated today there is a possibility of something, including a car, being in the water, but there's nothing to confirm this. Tidal conditions are making it difficult for the police dive team to enter the water with several failed attempts in recent days. Other media today reported that possible car debris washed up could be linked to their disappearance, which took place 11 days ago. Police are still dependent on sightings of Mike and John in the southern region and urge anyone with information to contact police. They say any information, no matter how small, may help police locate the pair. PowerNet have almost completed a project that's seen significant investment of over $12 million in the city's electricity network. This includes $9 million for a new substation and $3 million for the cable that runs underground from Spay Street to Transpower's grid exit point on Finlay Road. For Invercargill City it provides a duplicate uh, supply route uh, from the grid exit point into the central city. So there is obviously an underground cable all the way through um, into the current Dune Street site, but this gives us a uh, duplicate supply into the city, so it reinforces the this, this supply to the city. And as far as capacity goes? Yeah, it's, we've increased the capacity by 50% uh, through into the city, uh, so what that does allows for future growth as well, so we've covered that as well as asset replacement, it's also planned future growth. The uh, equipment at the previous site was perhaps getting a little dated, it was opportune to look at shifting it, but there were other reasons why you looked at doing that. Yeah, it's very much a asset replacement, but also a site relocation project. Um, in 2011-2012, as part of our seismic assessments around the networks, we discovered that the Invercargill Water Tower did pose a risk to the Dune Street substation. Um, so when we were considering asset replacement, we looked at another site. Uh, so we've moved the substation around to Space Street. We've learnt a lot from the Christchurch experience and with our peers up there. Um, and what you do find is even when there is seismic activity, there may be exclusion zones imposed. Uh, the Dune Street substation was a critical site and uh, we need access to that at any time. So that was the decision we'd best to relocate away from the water tower. We've been very careful about how we've designed it. Um, it does look like a commercial building, uh, but it's quite different to the Dune Street site where all the equipment is now placed indoors, um, which is a lot better for local residents. Obviously the noise and visual um, impacts are significantly reduced, so we've taken a lot of time on behalf of Electricity and Vicargill to get that right. Still some finishing touches to go, but you've, you are planning on opening on, on Thursday? Yes, the substation will be commissioned on Thursday, so we'll have power flowing from um, the National Grid into Space Street. Uh, but then there's some aesthetics, some landscaping and other things around the front. But yeah, very much uh, operating site from Thursday. This is a significant investment for electricity in Vicargill, um, for Invercargill City. It definitely future proofs um, the city uh, for supply into the future. Um, one for reliability of supply, but um, allows for future growth as well. South and business owners were let in on the secret formula of success today from one of the world's best. Entrepreneur lecturer Tony Sieber is an internationally sought after speaker and was in Invercargill today running a workshop focusing on the changing times of technology. Sieber calls major technological trends disruptive technologies and spoke to Southenders about how they can use such ideas to better their business and the whole economy. The concept is that um, you create a new market with existing technologies or new technologies, but also with business model innovation, uh, and you go on to either destroy a market or fundamentally change it in a way that it was not uh, a market before. Uh, examples, you know, landline telephony, for instance, was disrupted by cell phones. Nobody uses landline telephony anymore and that's because cell phones and now smartphones are disruptive technologies. 
And to find out why Southlanders forked out $400 each to hear Tony Sieber's methods, we have the full interview later in the bulletin. A report released today shows although New Zealand remains the dominant dairy exporter, we all need to make, keep an eye on our competitors. The ASB Farm Shed Economics report was released today and says the New Zealand dairy production outlook is not as bad as first feared. Prices have moved to reflect the view on dairy up sharply for February on the fear of falling production and then down again as those fears eased. The report said while the slump in the global dairy market persists, with local farmers being hit hard, the US is having the best dairy farm margins in seven years. Overall, the US is considered New Zealand's biggest competitor due to its domestic market, but New Zealand remains the dominant dairy exporter with changes in homegrown supply still dictating global shifts in export supply. The number of young people appearing in court has more than halved in the past nine years and the number of adults facing charges in courts is also decreasing. 400 fewer youth, youth aged 10 to 16 appeared in court last year compared to 2013, bringing figures to the lowest point in 20 years and over 50% lower than its peak of 2007. A vast majority of young people apprehended by police are now dealt with by youth aid officers, family group conferences and other methods aimed at preventing them from reoffending. One initiative is government's Youth Crime Action Plan, a 10-year strategy to reduce crime and offending by young people and help offenders turn their lives around. Under the plan, 20 communities across New Zealand use their own local solutions for youth offending problems. Do stay with us coming up after the break. International speaker Tony Sieber shares his thoughts on how Southland can move forward with technology plus a traditional welcome for global students at James Harkest. Welcome back. Technology is changing constantly and tends to disrupt businesses throughout the world. Lecturer Tony Sieber believes he knows the methods to progressing with technology and Southlanders were willing to pay a lot of money to learn them. The idea is essentially to help people anticipate to know what the key technologies that are improving exponentially are, um, such as artificial intelligence or robotics or 3D printing, mobile internet and so on, and put them together in a way that they can create products and services that can, again, disrupt markets, create markets and disrupt markets. And to be a step or two or three ahead of what the market is offering today. So it's not just let's go out and build something cool, but it's actually how do I anticipate where the technologies are going to go and where the business models are going to go and build a product to take advantage of that. Is it quite common for people to have difficulties in getting their head around new technology? Um, not at all. I mean, once they look at it uh, the way that we put it together, then it's pretty simple to understand. Um, but if you don't actually look at it the way that we're showing it, um, you know, that Callahan Innovation is uh, showing it and that I'm showing it, then it is hard. You need to actually train yourself. It's an educational process to think about, okay, which products are improving at a thousand times? And then let me take those products and put them into new innovations and put together a new business model and boom, you have a new company uh, that's disruptive. Is it hard? Well, we don't think about it on an everyday basis. You need to be educated. And once you're educated, then it changes the way you view the world, actually. So you've managed to simplify something that's quite complicated? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, exponentials are not simple. Uh, but yeah, it's all simplified. You put together the exponential technologies, the business model innovation, the how do you make this product fit with a real market as opposed to a nice thing to have and put all that together and you can disrupt the market and create disruptive products and services. Southland as a region quite relies on agriculture and yes. ag agricultural industries. Yes. Are, are you industry specific? Um, most of the things that I do are based on uh, information technologies and those are many of the technologies that are improving exponentially. Um, however, the methods that I teach also apply to agriculture uh, and so on. Um, so, you know, for instance, um, what I teach is that many technologies are improving 
the, the cost of producing certain goods and services is improving on an exponential basis, and you can pretty much anticipate when they're going to disrupt a market. There is a company now that is essentially making meat uh, in the lab without a cow. Uh, and to do that, you need to do essentially synthetic biology. Milk, for instance. Milk is actually a, a very simple uh, thing to replicate using software. There's a whole movement in Silicon Valley of um, food as software where you put together all the aminos and the proteins and the fats and so on of a certain product um, as if it were software components. So there, you know, two markets that are New Zealand's top two export markets. Um, you know, when you take this course and you look at the methods, the methodology that I'm teaching, you'll be able to anticipate that disruption. So your methods could have the capacity to change entire economies then? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, it's happening already. If you look at, you know, what Uber, for instance, in the U.S. is doing to the taxi industry, boom, uh, they're, they're, they're being disrupted. The same thing is happening with uh, uh, biotech, uh, with synthetic biology and so on. You can use exactly the same methodology to anticipate a disruption, when and where and how it's going to happen. Over the next five to 15 years, every single industry on earth is gonna be disrupted. You name it, it's gonna be disrupted. Energy, telecom, automotive, uh, logistics, beef, milk, you name it, it's gonna be, the government itself is gonna be disrupted. So you need to know how to anticipate these disruptions in order to take advantage, be the disruptor rather than the, than, than the one who's disrupted. It was all about cultural enrichment for students at James Hargis Senior this morning, but more on that after the weather. Nominations are open for the 2015 Southland Environment Awards. This year marks the 20th year of the awards and Environment Southland wants to hear about anyone who's making a difference in our region. Individuals, schools, farmers, community groups and businesses. If that's you or someone you know, get an entry form and let's recognise and celebrate these environmental achievers. Entries close May 1st. Contact Environment Southland for details today. Taking a look at the weather around the country today, Thursday, uh, sorry, Tuesday the 24th of March. Auckland coming in on 21 degrees, Wellington on 20, 22 for Christchurch. Dunedin on 23, Queenstown 20, 19 for Gore, a little cooler in Invercargill today on 16 and even cooler on Stewart Island with 12. Looking ahead tomorrow, it'll be mostly cloudy with scattered rain easing inland in the morning with light winds. Winton looking for 19 tomorrow and Wyndham 20, Gore and Invercargill and Tōtāpere all chasing 19 overnight lows of 12. And for Tiana, 18 degrees tomorrow, along with nightcaps. In the marine forecast for Fovo, variable 10 knots overnight to northeast 15 knots. Southwest swell rising to 3 metres, fair visibility in scattered rain with a rough sea for a time. And for Puska, south, southerly 15 knots to northerly 30 knots, southwest swell 3 metres to northwest swell 3 metres, and high sea in the south. Looking ahead to the long range forecast for Thursday, scattered rain clearing but remaining rather cloudy with winds mainly light, cloud increasing on Friday, rain developing in the evening with northerlies also developing, rain or drizzle at times and southeasterlies on Saturday. Asian students may have been feeling the cold this morning as they awaited their formal greeting at a local high school but were soon warmed by the welcome. Thai and Japanese students received traditional Māori welcome at James Hargis senior campus this morning, including a pōwhiri and several waiata from the school's kapahaka group. Around 42 Thai students from Bangkok and Chiang Mai along with 20 Japanese students on exchange with Hargis sister at high school, Kumagaya Nishi, are in the city to experience education the New Zealand Way. Some are staying for just eight days while others are here for eight weeks or more. The school exchanges have been going for several decades and James Hargist College Principal Andy Wood says it provides important reciprocal cultural enrichment for students. And with that warm welcome brings us to a close. Sport follows next from the news team. Good night.